Yeah, so. okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what is that shirt? It's an API first initiative shirt. I think that we need to make shirt now. Uh, yeah, I think we need to make uh, some kind of initiative shirt. <laughs> each initiative will just step up the game of like crazy gear <laughs> for each conference. Uh -huh. yeah. Do we want to shut the doors? Or? Uh -huh. I, just, I think it, if you leave them open, at least more people will know that they come in. All right. Should we get started? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get started. All righty. Uh, hey, everybody. Good afternoon. We're going to go ahead and get started. Once again, this is a farewell to Twig. And um, this is a core conversation about the current state and the future state of our theme system. First things first, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves, starting with Lauri. Hi, I'm Lauri. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I currently live in Bangkok, Thailand, and I work for Acquia in the office of the CTO. Do you want me to press the next slide? Yeah. Great. Uh, I'm Matt Grill, uh, JavaScript engineer at Acquia. I work in the office of CTO as well. Uh, and when I'm not writing JavaScript, I'm crashing my bike. <laughs> My name is Preston So. Uh, I normally have an extremely long bio that nobody ever has time to read. So instead, here's a GIF. One thing that we want to note. <laughs> As you can tell, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Um, one note that I do want to make, uh, if you are interested in these kinds of topics, if you're interested in decoupled Drupal, if you're interested in what these weird pink shirts are that two of our friends are wearing here, uh, we're having decoupled Drupal days again this year in New York City in August. And we'd love to have you there. If you're interested in speaking, if you're interested in attending, if you're interested in sponsoring, please come and talk to me afterwards. We'd love to have you. Yeah, so a little bit about uh, the problem space and the questions that we are going to ask today. And maybe some of this gets answered on our presentation. Some of it can be uh, answered by you during the uh, conversation that we are going to be having after the, the session. But uh, what we would like to focus on is that we want to figure out if we as a community should po put more focus on decoupling than trying to create a monolithic application uh, that could solve all different aspects of the front end development. Um, we are not sure if we even could, could proceed with the, with the current state where uh, we have one solution that, that tries to work for everyone. Um, we also know that uh, quite a lot of Drupal users are being using Drupal for decoupled purposes, and there is a lot of uh, complexity that comes from, uh, from, uh, from that. Uh, how could we re reduce the complexity that, that uh, it causes that we have multiple different approaches of uh, building front ends. A uh, little bit more about the problem space uh, and a few key issues that, that we have realized. So we, can, we assume that we would like to have a uni unified way to render on both client and server side. Currently, we don't have that. Uh, also, it's important that we have both because of, uh, if we only render on client side, uh, we cannot support browsers that are not uh, uh, JavaScript enabled. Also, it's important for performance. And uh, let's say uh, uh, indexing web, web pages is getting better on client side, but it's still a thing over there that uh, they use the server side rendered, um, server -side -rendered uh, content. Um, so it's definitely a valid use case still to have uh, both of them enabled. Um, also, another question that we have to have to find answers at some point is that uh, which subsystems we have to be able to share between client and server. Uh, are we going to have uh, root, uh, routing served uh, working on both? Do we, will we have rendering working on both? Will we have templating working in the same way on both? Um, this is all something that we have to decide uh, later on. Uh, also, a big, big question, big topic is uh, uh, how can we build a unified way to, to serial, serialize and deserialize data on both client and, and server side? Currently, uh, our, our backend and client rendering uh, works very differently uh, from each other. There is no unified way to do it. 
so this uh, core conversation is about figuring out if Twig is the right way forward, if the current team system that we have is the right way forward. This is all very experimental. We are dis having discussion about these topics. We are not saying that this is something that will happen or that we someone will make it happen, but we want to have the conversation at this point. Yeah. So um, one of the things that happened a couple of years ago at previous core conversations we've had and discussions around decoupled Drupal <coughs> is that there's a very big trend right now uh, that has been ongoing for a very long time at this point around shared templating and shared rendering in JavaScript. This is, of course, known as universal or isomorphic JavaScript. And everyone kind of got really crazy and said, you know, we really need universal JavaScript. And it's the way forward. It's the way that we're going to actually build modern applications that straddle that client-server divide. But you know, one of the things that a lot of Drupalists said at that time was, why don't we try to do that with Twig? We just had a huge amount of amazing work to bring Twig into Drupal. And why don't we see if there's a way that we can share Twig uh, across client and server? Because that is really the holy grail. That is the way that we can get people to work um, on their templates in a way that is as close to universal as possible. But there's a couple of problems with Twig. And I want to be very honest here. Um, and, and by the way, for those of you in the back, uh, uh, if you want to come and sit in these areas over here, there's some empty seats up front here and some empty seats uh, on the sides. I always hate to see people standing. It's, uh, um, anyways, so what is the problem with Twig? You know, Twig has been great for us uh, since Drupal 8 was released. But one of the issues is that a lot of these other templating systems that currently exist in the web development landscape, like JSX, like Handlebars, like Angular Directives, and the way that you template in Angular, both of those, uh, all of those templating languages and all of those templating uh, uh, technologies actually have equivalents on the client side. We have one allegedly for Twig, which is called Twig.js. But here's the problem with what's happening in terms of the clean break that we have between Twig.js and what's happening in Drupal's implementation of Twig. Right now, our Drupal version of Twig has what I would call a natively server-side uh, focus, which means that whenever we are going through the rendering process in Drupal, we are assuming that all of the things that we do in Twig are going to be generating a server-side uh, output that eventually gets flushed to the browser. Um, but one of the things that we would need for this to happen on the client side is that we do need a natively Drupal Twig JS implementation for this to work. Right now, there is a bit of a difference between our own PHP Drupal implementation of Twig and the Twig.js uh, uh, framework. Whereas if you look at a lot of these other templating languages, they are natively client-side from the very beginning. From the get-go, they focused on client-side templating. It is primarily that that is their emphasis. And merely adding on a server-side renderer grants the ability to provide a server-side rendering of that template. So the way that we're thinking about it these days and the way that JavaScript developers are thinking about it these days is backwards from how we have been thinking about it before. So we believe here, and once again, this is you know, not meant to suggest a way forward or for us to you know, advocate that this is the way that things need to work. It's to open up a discussion. We believe that Drupal should be treating client-side rendering as a first-class citizen. And it is our goal today to talk about how that could look and how that could work with all of you, since we got you all in the room with this provocative title. All right. So there's always a question of, so can we use PHP to do some sort of like JavaScript bindings to render templates on the server? Uh, and the answer is sort of. Uh, if you've heard of PHP V8.js, please raise your hand. And if you have ever used uh, PHP V8.js to do anything, keep your hand up. Great. Hey, Sam. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Um, it does work. You can render JS stuff. You can render React and build context and do server-side rendering from PHP with PHP V8.js and do that, but it is a back and forth and back and forth process, and it's not uh, the best. So uh, 
why don't we use Twig.js or other client-side libraries? And this question has come up at literally every DrupalCon I've been to in the last like three years. And in the beginning, Twig.js didn't support hardly anything that we were doing with native PHP Twig implementations. Uh, but it's also like completely different from how uh, we do sort of server-side twig with like render arrays and all the, the way the data is abstracted to be rendered in the twig template and template includes, which Lowry told me is now fixed, which is a huge thing for a long time. So it's, you're gonna be in for a big headache to try and do, to use the same templates you use on the server if you try and use twig.js. So, Lowry's here. Yeah, so some more of the specific problems that we've figured out and some solutions that we could potentially propose for those. Um, so the Drupal Twig implementation is very tightly coupled uh, uh, with, the, with the front end, um, meaning that uh, it's not very easy to replace Twig with something else. Um, we are proposing as a solution that we would use web services as a bridge between backend and the front end instead, and then you could use Twig or any other uh, way of rendering uh, as you wish. Uh, another problem statement is that front-end developers can choose to work with what they want at the moment. Basically, we do have the concept of team templating engines, but it's a very complicated process of choosing to use any other templating engine, engine than Twig. Um, if we would move to a rendering layer that allows us to render both on uh, client and server, and is also um, has, the, ha, uh, has this, uh, the, the unified way of transporting data uh, through APIs, uh, it, it could be easier to use another templating engine. Um, because, of, because of the problems that we have, it's too complicated to work with every, uh, uh, it's too complicated for, for users to work with every JavaScript uh, framework, so that if we support every JavaScript framework, uh, it could mean potentially that every developer has to work with every JavaScript framework. But um, what we are proposing is, uh, is that Drupal would, would ship with only one true front end, which should, could be React or, or Vue or, or Twig. And um, people, people could then build their own implementation and we, we would try to enable them to do that. Just, you want me to switch the slide? I just have one additional thing on that last point in that is so from Vienna, if you were in DrupalCon Vienna, we sort of made the, announce, the decision and the announcement that we were gonna work with React uh, in sort of an experimental capacity to develop a JavaScript-based API-powered front-end for Drupal that's not like, you're not forced to use it, it's, we're working on it right now. And that plan sort of is to integrate sort of all the capabilities you can do in the UI uh, into the API. So you can build your own front-end if you'd like. So, yeah, I guess I just literally said this slide. Uh, but, you know, from Vienna, we decided to pick React um, because the people that were there and from a lot of the input from the community seemed to be, you know, React was very strong. It has a lot of great benefits. Uh, I really don't want to talk about that right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the nice thing, too, is that the tooling around server-side rendering for React is really great, and it's only getting better and faster. So if we're going to use those same templates on the client, we can also use them on the server and get an identical output. Um, yeah, JSX is just React's templating language. And if you're familiar with HTML, you're probably familiar with JSX. Um, yeah, and this is nice too, is that I think what we'll find when we get to this point of building all these pieces is that the front end will be a side effect of creating great APIs and the API powered work that the API, the API team is doing will be able to enable us to anybody to build a front end, either a reduced functionality set or a very robust piece because all those things will all be exposed over the API. So. Yay. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, uh, there has like definitely in the past been some level of uh, frustration with a suggestion that we're gonna put JSS, JSX in Drupal core. Um, uh, 
I'm not. I don't. I'm not here to try and like assuage your fears about that. Uh, it will happen. Um, so, it's. If you have questions, come talk to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, um, common question that I've heard is that shouldn't we explore pairing Twig with React first? Uh, uh, which is an option, I guess. But yeah. Next slide. Yes. Uh, combining the Twig with React comes with uh, huge downsides as well. Uh, even though it might sound like a good idea to use Twig with React, uh, I've explored it. I, I'm actually maintaining a library which bridges Twig into React because I needed, needed it in a project. But yeah, so I know how it's like, and uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and there's also huge uh, problems that would be Drupal specific, not even specific to, to, to React. Like, we would still have to solve the, the, the problems related to, to, to Twig, uh, especially. But we would also lose a uh, big part of the benefits that React yeah. uh, brings. Um, yeah. A good, good question uh, to think about ourselves is that should we abandon templating languages altogether? What is the benefit of having any templating language itself at all? Because of templating languages come with uh, huge overhead always. It me if you have templating language, it means that everyone has to learn a yet another language uh, in which they have to write code. They come with some downsides, obviously, such as like not. You can go to the next. One. Oh yeah. Such as uh, not 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 supporting all all different use cases because of the language might be limited. Like let's say Twig might not support all of the things that you can do in PHP, and also. The, what we say is that uh, one of the major benefits of, of uh, having templating language is that it will be more secure or it will be it, it will restrict what people do in the in the template like let's say that they don't do node queries in their template but that could be simply avoided by just not doing it I mean why do you have to set these limitations? Uh, in templates, if people want to do node queries in their template, I think it's their own problem. To be honest, like, like it, it's a huge overhead. We pay a, a very big price for for the fact that uh, you uh, that we have uh, have the limitations in place. And one of the other issues, of course, is that um, in a lot of ways, the JavaScript ecosystem has really pushed forward on a lot of these ideas. Um, we see virtual DOM, uh, VDOM. Um, we see a lot of implementations of on-the-fly rendering that are extremely powerful and, you know, quite frankly, uh, put a lot of the front-end implementations um, out there to shame because of how performant those are. And one of the things that is a big concern is, do we feel that Twig.js or some other uh, front end can offer those same benefits of on-the-fly rendering on the client side. Yeah, so from the community, uh, there are some tooling, there's some tooling out there already. Uh, Twig, GraphQL, um, I mean, listen, uh, you shouldn't put your business logic in your templates. If you're doing that, you're already having a bad time. Uh, so there's a tool, WaterWheel.js, which is originally developed as a helper library around Core's REST implementation. Uh, it has some JSON API helpers, too, and some authentication pieces um, <coughs> made this. So uh, it's a thing. Uh, the JS Drupal, this is the sort of organization and JavaScript modernization initiative uh, project. We are building a decoupled admin interface right now and trying to tackle literally all of the challenges that we've just talked about uh, today. And if you want, there's a session tomorrow where we go over all this. And React Twig, uh, this is the thing that Lowry created, which does a thing for wrapping Twig templates in React components. Um, he says don't use it, so. <laughs> You know. It has three stars on GitHub. So. Only three? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That sounds great. All right. Yeah. Uh, JS Modernization Initiative uh, is like notoriously uh, underhelped, right? I think there's 
you know, there's some of us and we could always use more. So if you're amped about JavaScript and you also like Drupal and you want to work on this, Sally and Daniel are right there and I'm right here and talk to anybody else. Uh, yeah, and we're doing a lot of really cool stuff. Cool, so um, that's it for our content. We'd love to open it up for discussion now, just like a traditional core conversation. Um, if we could ask that people use the mic here. Um, and we're gonna do something a little different today. Um, I'd like to try out what's called a progressive stack. Um, what that means is I'd like to ask that all women come to the front. If you are male, please go to the back. I wanna hear from voices that are not typically represented. If you are a person of color, please come to the front. If you are gender nonconforming or uh, uh, trans folks, please come to the front and we'll start with that. Thank you very much. I have a very simple question and maybe I didn't quite get it from this. Can from you state the, your name? My name is David Wong. I, uh, I don't work anywhere right now and I have a question. Um, my question is <laughs> if you have if you had to boil down in a single statement the fundamental question that you're trying to ask at this particular gathering, what would it be? It would be, how do we make client-side rendering a first-class citizen in Drupal in a graceful way? Why does Drupal still need a front end? <laughs> Thank you, Matt. That was my not really question. but. Um, what I want to say is the reason... Oh, Daniel, I'm working for a three-letter company. Um, the reason why I think people have the perception that, like, Symphony is really easy, or, like, why React is really easy, or Ember, or anything besides Drupal is because um, all these projects and all these approaches have limited scope. And in Drupal, we don't have this limited scope right now. We do want inline editing, but we also want to couple the APIs, and we want content modeling, but we also want WYSIWYG editors. Um, and I, I want to open up the question, um, asking whether we forever want to like, cover both and all the multiple dimensions of use cases, and whether it might be actually way better for long-term success to more focus on, let's say, our content modeling and our like, API strategy while still having like, a default simple front end. So I made this point um, a couple of years ago or about a year ago at uh, Baltimore, which is that um, you know, I think that we need to have a serious discussion about whether or not we need to have a clean break in Drupal. We've had this discussion quite often, um, and I think uh, uh, one of the things that I've said multiple times is, do we need to have uh, Dr Drupal 9 be decoupled out of the box? What I mean by that is, do we need to have a canonical Drupal backend that provides APIs, and then an optional front end, right? Something that you could opt to use if you need those things like in-place editing and layout building, but that would be something written in you know, some technology that we choose, such as React, um, and work on that as being completely fully decoupled. Um, the reason for this is because if we try, once again, to include another template uh, a new templating language, we're going to have the exact same problems of complexity that we had before. And I really want to avoid the scenario where we are stuck with um, uh, front-end technologies that we have to maintain well into the future. Why don't we give that optionality to the developer, have Drupal provide a single front-end that is an optional front-end, and make everything else API-driven solely? Um, I had a lot of thoughts about that, but that's Ted. what I came up to. Yeah, is that Ted your name? Yeah, Ted okay. Bowman, work at Acquia. Um, Ted Bowman, Drupal.org. The other thing, the thing I actually wanted to come up and say is that I feel like the JS Drupal is a bit of a misnomer in a sense like the end goal is a better UX, right? But also I think it, for people who are interested in getting involved, there's a lot of help that needs to happen on the PHP side to improve like uh, exposing the APIs. There's a lot of help needed on the UX for like designing the UX. So if you're not a JavaScript developer but you're interested in JS Drupal and improving the admin interface, um, we need a lot of help. We have a support module 
um, Drupal module that exposes this stuff we could use help on. We eventually want to get some of that stuff into core. So if you're a PHP developer but you want to help this project, there's a lot of need for that. If you're a UX person, there's a huge need for that and probably other things I'm not thinking of. So, yeah. Thanks, Ted. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Tim Whitney, Tim Edwitt on Drupal.org. Uh, I work for NASDAQ right now. Um, but I guess my question is, we, we are changing one debt for another debt, right? And it's actually just making it more obtuse in some ways, right? Now you need to be a Drupal developer on the back end and now a React developer on the front end. And what, you know, how are we as a community going to keep that out of the box experience nice? Obviously, we want to bring in more communities, right? We want to say like, oh, you're a React developer, you're this or that. But how do we also keep our core community without another thing that just is like this big impedance? Because templating engines, we're very familiar with them. Like the Twig PHP template to Twig update wasn't too large. I mean, it was big. There was a lot of effort that was put into it, but as far as moving into it, it we could really see the path forward, uh, the render arrays stayed and all of that. So for better or worse, whatever, <laughs> uh, neither here nor there, but how do we maintain the core community and the developer out of the experience box, like uh, experience, out of the box experience without sacrificing kind of just more overhead? Because one, one man shops, right? Like that's like a huge part of our community now you're asking that one guy to be like, all right, now you have to get familiar with React and how that templates, and you might just need to change this. So yeah, you have that out of the box front end, but how maintainable is that for one dude or one lady or one person non-conforming? I, I mean, I think if you watched the keynote yesterday, I mean, it's we need to get off our island, for sure. right? And the island that we've been on for so many years has been PHP. PHP template and Twig and render arrays and even just like come something if you know a lot about Drupal and you know a lot about how Drupal's like sort of PHP system works, you may not really understand how Twig works, right? And the theming and all the stuff that goes into that. And I think that it gets that that system has sort of like lagged behind like pretty substantially. And the way the web has moved forward itself is, I mean. Yeah. So uh, I want to take on that as well. Um, so what we are talking about is uh, making all of the, fr uh, the front ends that Drupal has decoupled. It doesn't necessarily mean that you would have to use React or React would be the only option to use as a front end. Uh, it's just making sure that uh, the Twig, uh, Twig implementation that we have would be decoupled as well uh, in a way that uh, the, the way that the data gets transported to Twig would happen in the same way as it happens for, for our other, uh, other front ends. And uh, I mean, if there is momentum around Twig uh, as, a, as, a, as a front end, it could be one of the options and then there would be very minimal change for, yeah, yeah, for the, developer experience. The, the side effect of all of this is the front end. The real work is what Ted mentioned, it's the really robust, strong APIs that allow you to build a front end in Twig with Twig.js or React or any of the other, you know, oddly named tools. And, and, and just to kind of jump on this last point, you know, one of the things that's interesting about the way that the web development landscape, just to zoom out all the way to the big picture, is that the amount of complexity and the amount of knowledge you have to know at this point to be a quote unquote full stack developer, which is a total misnomer today, is colossal. I mean, you literally have to basically have the library of Alexandria in your head to be able to know how to write a REST plugin and also know how to create a React component and also do this and that. So, you know, from my perspective, um, I don't really believe that, uh, um, uh, you know, um, you can be a specialist in every single aspect of the stack today. Um, it's just an impossibility. And we have grappled with these sorts of things in the past. We brought in jQuery. We had a lot of our themers who were used to only doing PHP template learn jQuery. Uh, a lot of these things happened in Drupal. Um, and from a human perspective in the Drupal community, we want to set 
everyone up for success. We want to make sure that we're learning the right technologies and getting to the point where you know, your skills are something that are gonna stay up to date in this, in this very fast changing landscape. Um, so my opinion is that uh, if you are a one man shop, you know, if you are sort of a, of a, sort of a one, one person shop, you know, why don't uh, you know, we look at some of these ways that we can enable you to only focus on React and leave one of these, uh, you know, leave the APIs up to something like Contenta or up to something uh, uh, like a web services distribution that allows for you to innovate much more rapidly. Um, I think at this point we have to acknowledge that there's just no way that you can know both the front end and the back end completely at this point. There's just, there's just, there's just no way, I think. Hi. Uh, Mark Drummond, I uh, do front end development at Lullabot. Uh, one of the last projects I got to work on, I did a React project, it was my first full React project as a progressively decoupled portion of a larger Drupal site. And, and it was a pleasure. I, I really enjoyed, you know, being able to start with JSON as my data and being able to, you know, crypt, you know put together all the components I needed around that, and, and that was great. Um, I, this is the session I have been most anxious about for all of DrupalCon. Sorry, um, so, and frankly, everybody I've talked to about this has been, you know, I'm sorry, but about ready to flip a table over this, uh, not an HTML table. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, if this was called a farewell to Twig parentheses for the admin side of Drupal, like, I, I totally hear you, right? That makes a ton of sense. Like, if you're going to be doing, redoing um, the admin side of things in React, which I think is sounding like it makes a lot of sense and everything like that, uh, trying to reuse Twig for that just like, it sounds like bonkers town, right? Like, and nobody needs that. That just sounds totally painful. And so I have no concerns about getting JSX and stuff like that in there um, for that side of things. But that's an entirely different animal than the front-facing portion, the public-facing portion of a website. And, and I know that like within core, there's a lot of work that has to go around the admin experience, and so that can seem like the most important thing. But for most people working on Drupal sites, it's the front-facing front portion of the client site. And, and not all of those need to be decoupled sites. I mean, de I think decoupled is fantastic when it makes sense. Um, and, and that's great where, where we can do that. And we should totally like make Drupal API friendly and do everything we can to make that a great experience. But I, I don't know what the exact percentage is, if it's 90%, 95% of sites that probably don't need to be decoupled sites. But there's a lot. And uh, for the most people, you know, Twig is great. People were really excited about Twig. We put in a ton of time to make Twig, you know, and, it, and it's not all roses, but I, I, think, I think if you did separate out and had not Twig for the admin side, that probably actually gives a lot of possibilities for improvements on the client-facing side, because right now, it is challenging to theme Drupal sometimes because all of our theming is based around data structures, and that's a large part driven by the admin side of things. And like, if we could change things around and have like a more component-based architecture, and Twig was still on the front end of that, maybe you know that there could be great opportunities there. But I think, if, in talking about throwing Twig out when we've got, we've had so much effort to get there. And for a lot of people, that's one of the things they're happiest about with Drupal 8 on the front end. I think maybe don't, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater. And, and think about, like, the separation between the two. And, uh, yeah. And I guess the only other thing is, is on the admin side, I just want to, you know, understand about there, there's times when you need to override things and, like, how we would do that when in a React world. I don't know. Through Conor, that last Conor, one. Conor, yeah. talk, I, Conor talk on Thursday. We'll talk about it. Okay, cool. yep. can, can I ask a quick question? Just, uh, so when you mean decoupled, do you mean decoupled as in React JavaScript, or do you mean decoupled as in the way that we transform the data between our front-end rendering 
and the back end? I guess I don't fully understand. I mean, if you're saying that like we get some JSON and then we like put some theming around that, like within the Drupal server side, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like because there we could decouple and use Twig as an mm -hmm. option to render still. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd just be curious how that's going to work. Like, if that's just happening entirely on the server or you're having to make, you know, client requests over a REST API, I'd have concerns around, so, so, around that. But Yeah, so the serialization would happen in a similar way. So we would use a serious, ser serialized way to transform the, transport the data for the templates. But other than that, it could be similar to what we have right now. I, I don't fully yeah, understand that. So it means that, that you so, can, like, yeah. let's say, transport a node object for the template and use PHP methods uh, from that. So that couldn't happen. But other than that, the experience could be very similar. I want to learn more, and I'll sign up for your newsletter. So <laughs> I, I don't know yet. So, but thanks for talking about it. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. And I also want to say thank you uh, to those who, who, who have uh, restacked progressively here and let uh, some new voices come to the front. Appreciate it. Uh, hi. Um, I'm Sam, and I've been working on uh, like a web component Twig integration, just like as an experimental project. Um, and yeah, I ran into Twig.js performance issues. And so far, the only thing that I didn't make but I used was like template pre-compiling in the JavaScript so that the client actually doesn't process the template string. So that's a good start. It's kind of like PHP's Twig caching, but I was wondering what performance enhancements would need to happen to Twig.js for it to be considered viable uh, for uh, your project. I would say, uh, you know, a bare minimum is something that is competitive with uh, DOM diffing that currently exists right now, or some similar kind of performant rendering. Um, just because, you know, right now in JavaScript, all the rage is performance, right? Performance is all the rage. It's important. People are not going to opt to use Twig.js if it doesn't provide a means to render on the fly in a very fast and performant way. Um, I don't know Twig.js very well. I don't know if that exists. I don't think that exists in no. Twig.js. Um, but that would be, I think, an important first step. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is that Twig and Twig.js kind of just look like handlebars to me. And though it's take your JSON blob and apply it to your template and get HTML back, right? And then every time you want to restructure, it's new JSON, re-render your whole template, reinsert. And that is almost equivalent to like doing a round trip to a server, which doesn't feel very great to me. And uh, it, in my opinion, that's not where the web is going. We're moving much farther away from that is like every day. So, but yeah, if they could do something like that, then sure. But then we might as well just use some one of the other things. So. And I think one, one crucial point here that I wanted to bring up from earlier is that um, you know, when, when, when we talk about a, a, a sort of clean break and decoupling Drupal out of the box, we're talking also about the need to maintain backwards compatibility. And I think that's what Laudi was referring to earlier when, you know, we would need to have some kind of a Twig PHP front end that is one of the canonical front ends that people use um, to enable that kind of backwards compatibility. Uh, Thank you. In a way, you've answered one of my questions. And the other one was, um, sorry, I'm Michael. And as technical people here, we, I mean, pretty much many of these issues we are talking about, I mean, we can fix them if we want to. But I wonder if this discussion is guided by some kind of data on what would be the implication if, on, if we switched from, say, Twig to something else, and how would we stack up to the competition? Because uh, Drupal 8, as as we keep building it will become this huge uh, application of this uh, and 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 you find that smaller shops or uh, uh, f uh, freelancers might find it difficult to to present it as a solution or as a as a solution to certain types of clients that they have yeah. so have we do we have any kind of information or data that we that we can go by that has that guide, that will guide this discussion in the future. I don't. I mean, 
I don't think we have any like hard numbers to suggest that this is the right path forward. Uh, I mean, the only thing that I can say is when we decided to pick React, we got a bunch of people from the community and got a bunch of sort of issues and conversation around that. And sort of it was the one that A, seemed like the right choice and had people excited about working with it as a technology. Um, so. And there are some intrinsic issues with uh, performance benchmarking. Um, a lot of times people look to things like to-do list uh, rendering um, as a means to benchmark, but there have been uh, flaws called out in that methodology. There is no single way to uh, benchmark JavaScript performance or to benchmark rendering performance in a way that really uh, gives us uh, empirical data that we can really confide in. Um, I think that uh, uh, as a result, you know, what we would need to do for us to get that robustness of data would be to take typical use cases that exist in Drupal today. Um, you know, that could be something like, let's take uh, a very heavily themed uh, view or um, you know, something like that. Look at how that would be re-rendered in each of these things on the fly on the client side um, based on a change in uh, the configuration or what have you and determine based on that what would happen because we won't be able to get a realistic sense of, of this from just doing uh, to-do lists or you know, rendering rows. Um. Hi, um, I enjoy decoupling and do some interesting projects with React and have fun with it, but I feel like if you just, just based on some of the comments that people have are saying and where we're going in general, people are saying like, oh, you can't even be a full stack developer. Everything is so complicated and we have to learn this and this and all this complicated stuff. And it's like, when you look back 15 years ago and we were just writing custom PHP and pushing it up to FTP on Dreamweaver, those <laughs> sites were just about as good as the ones we're doing now. They're not, we haven't like really accomplished a lot with all this additional complexity other than we're charging people you know, 20 times more than we were before, and we're doing all this work. But like, my clients are still mostly coming and saying that they want to show their upcoming events and their news and their, their campaigns and their staff bios. And I just feel like sometimes in these fun, like technical, interesting conversations, are we forgetting like what we're actually building, which is just like websites for people to just read stuff and like sign up for a mailing list. So. I, that's how I feel. Do we want, does one of us want to respond to that? I mean, I think a lot of the benefit here is hidden in the developer experience improvements. Uh, but I think that's number one. So I recently started um, working on rebuilding my own site in React. And immediately one of the things that you notice is that, yes, I am building a normal website. There's nothing special about it. I'm not building some, you know, whiz, spang, you know, Facebook clone or Twitter thing or, you know, sports live feed. I'm just building a regular content website. But the, you can already tell that there are certain performance benefits that come into play. When you click on a link, you don't get a blank page. It's instantaneous. I mean, you are, you know, that in and of itself is a huge performance benefit that is available in Drupal right now thanks to Refreshless um, and, and some of that work. But it's, it's something that is standard now across uh, people who build websites in React. And more and more these days, you're seeing people building literally pure content websites in React and in these technologies. You're, you know, that is something that we do have to acknowledge and take a look at. Um, but I certainly uh, uh, agree with you that you know, we shouldn't inject more complexity just because we want to play with the coolest things and the really nifty things. There should actually be a lot of rhyme and reason to it. And I think one of the questions we have to answer is, does the benefit of adding this and, let's say, uh, uh, you know, to some people, providing a means that brings us into a more modern landscape, uh, potentially, or gives us a better developer experience or a better user experience, does that outweigh the drawback of the added complexity? That's an important question we have to answer, obviously. Um, I wanted to go back to the point which we had previously about the community aspects of it. I think like the people which are already building decoupled sites 
I mean, yes, there might be problems, but they are like minor problems in quote, in like compared to like the overall problem of like people not having modern, well, no, I want to, don't want to say that, but like people which are like used to like a more common stack. Um, and I think like no matter which technical solution we pick, like all of them will work in some way. I think the actual hard problem is like a deciding whether we want to go there and b like if we decide that how do we transition the community towards that um how would you educate people like like how do we get the mindset how would you change the mindset of people to think decoupled right to start with the content model first and we move the like rendering aspect in from your content types for example um and i would like to propose at least a couple of ideas um we have the umami theme why do we not have the umami application which does exactly the same thing as in you render the Umami Resi magazine. We put that maybe in core, by that we dog food ourselves. Um, I think it would be really valuable. We could, we could do the same with the editor UI, right? We could have a dedicated UI targeted towards the recipe magazine. Sure, nobody would use it in real life, but like it would still be dog fooding and um, be, would maybe produce the components, which also the admin UI thing will produce components and then like people can pick them up. And I think by having like small steps, we, we could move the community on the long run into a better future. Whereas um, just like throwing them, them into cold water wouldn't work. Cold water. Yeah, I mean maybe, I mean don't you think that like the sort of read only Decoupled front end problem is kind of solved already. I mean, it's not a technical problem. Yeah, it's a demo. This is what you want. Well, no, I want a way for. <laughs> I want a way. For, well, I want a way for the community to move along. Like to, I want a way for, for the community to learn yeah. and experience. So the reason why, for example, Redux is used is because. Sorry, Redux is a thing in React. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. It's a, it's a kind of a complex thing in React. And people like which just start with, or like which have never used it, don't see the reason why it's there, or like don't see why it's good. And I think um, in React, like making the process of like exp making these experiences and then like stumbling upon Redux and seeing, oh yeah, there's actually a thing which solves all these problems. I think we as a community need to make the same transition process. As in, we see that like uh, our renderings, I mean, that's what we see right now, right? Our rendering system and layout configuration and trick templates and theming system, all is so super complex and we make the experience that this is not the way to go. And like much we will make the experience that like pure server side trick rendering, for example, but in a decoupled way, it's also not the way to go because we need JS rendering. But like, I think we as a community make to, have to make the experience and we need to drag the community along um, in order to be actually successful on yeah. the long run. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that's something that I think would be a lot of fun to work on. Cool, uh, well, we need more people. <laughs> so. Hello, I'm Matteo. Um, thank you for the session and for opening the discussion. Um, I have a bunch of thoughts uh, that have been piling. Uh, I'm gonna summarize them really quickly. Um, I think that we should not underestimate the boredom of the engineer. Like we don't keep doing the same thing that we did 15 years ago, right? We, we need challenges and we need to stay passionate to, in order to do new things and uh, you know, create new UX patterns and implement them in a performant manner. Um, also, wanted to uh, to say something related to what Ted mentioned about um, n needing help in different layers of the JS Drupal. Uh, we just got out, got out of a buff where we for the API First Initiative, uh, where we discussed ways that we can better help in these two. So if you find yourself in the, in the urge to be creative and uh, you're bored and you want to uh, do other stuff, uh, just reach out and maybe we can uh, find a way to collaborate all together. And finally, and more targeted to what you were saying, I've got a question. Uh, there are many things that come with the monolith. 
and I guess that you would not expect that from me. But uh, there are very good reasons to uh, stay monolith, and maybe we can learn some of those when we go decoupled, because it's happening. Uh, it's going to happen eventually, uh, or that's my opinion. Um, I was in an accessibility uh, session yesterday, and uh, it was highlighted how the umami uh, theme had like very good uh, things added in there, and that kind of struck to me that we are providing good examples on how to and helpers, more importantly, on how to build a lot of things that go for free in Drupal, yeah. right nowadays. So. And this is the question. Um, do you think that we should really still provide a front end that implements all of these features and serves as the starting point? So we know that Drupal sites or whatever this is called in the decoupled um, apocalyptic feature should start from? Is that something that we should leave to another project to care about and implement all these features? Or is it our responsibility? It's a very good question. <laughs> um, I think it would be pretty radical if Drupal wouldn't come up with the way of rendering in, inside its main package. I don't think we have discussed of that option at all yet. I don't think any of us is arguing Sorry, go ahead, Matteo. Sorry, I, I guess that I got that idea from uh, a comment that said, uh, then we could use any front end uh, in maybe Drupal 9, maybe it was mentioned, and by any front end, that kind of got me the idea that there was none that was preferred. So maybe that was wrong. Actually, there was an, an, another pro problem statement which said that um, I would have to learn all of the different JavaScript frameworks, and on that one we suggested as a solution that we would come up with the one uh, which we choose to use in core, but we would, would enable anyone who wants to use another approach. And when we have this way of rendering in core, it of course allows us to provide the examples as well with it. With it. But if you don't have a way to render inside Drupal core, it's rather difficult to provide any examples. In what should come to literally no surprise to anyone in this room, I think they should be split. So, yeah, I don't think any of us is advocating for Drupal's um, feature set to be reduced to solely backend concerns. Oh, no, uh, I am. OK, well, all right. Well, <laughs> obviously, we haven't uh, discussed this prior to this. But uh, what we are advocating for is you know, that we decouple by design and have or at least I am, let me just not speak for, well, <laughs> now that I <laughs> just spoke for them and, it, you know, obviously not real. Um, you, know, uh, you know, we should have those backend concerns covered, but for everyone who trusts in the Drupal monolith, I think, you know, you raised a very good point, which is that people get a lot of benefit from the monolith. People like the fact that we have in-place editing and it's all tied together. People like oftentimes that the Drupalisms leak out to the front end because it makes it easier to theme and easier to style. Um, we need to keep that in place to some degree. So what I'm saying is basically we need a uh, you know, decoupled architecture that, is, that looks monolithic. But that you can, but okay, so you know what I mean. Uh, you know, what, I, what I mean by that is that under the surface it is decoupled. But for the user, for, the, for someone who is working with the system, for all intents and purposes, it acts, looks, talks, feels like a monolith. Brian. Yeah, I'm uh, Brian Perry. I work at uh, HS2 Solutions and uh, you know, some of these concepts are definitely attractive to me, but, you know, as we've talked about providing, like, a twig rendering option, you know, I, that does seem important. I think about people that I work with, people walking around here, who would be sad if that didn't exist? But, but uh, like, maintaining that and another option at the same time, like, that sounds hard. I wonder how that would work. And then that kind of got me thinking that, you know, maybe there's a subtext here or, um, you know, uh, something else potentially behind this, or like a conclusion that you have to, to reach here, that part of what we might be saying if we're talking about this is that we think that, um, you know, having Drupal be decoupled first or, or making that more of the primary focus 
is like critical to the success of the project and, and our ability to grow and um, maintain relevancy. So yeah, I just haven't heard people say that out loud. Um, so it felt good. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was wondering if you guys agree with that, basically. So, so just to be clear, well, maybe I just want people to clap. I don't know. <laughs> so, so sorry. Just, just, just to make it clear, what you were saying. So, you're saying that um, uh, do do people feel that uh, we need to even make these changes, and Drupal should keep on the trajectory that it's on? Is that sorry? I'm, I'm the, other way. The, other way. the other way. So we should uh, go in this other. I, I actually, I'm just curious to what side you guys fall on. I mean, I have a guess, but I just haven't heard people say it out loud. As far as like that, a motivator to to some of these things might be. Um, you know, the relevancy and health of Drupal as a project? Well, let me put it this way. Um, in my experience, selling decoupled Drupal, uh, uh, sort of, you know, consulting on decoupled Drupal deals and, 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 and advising a lot of uh, Acquia's customers, um, what I can say right now is that there is absolutely no reason that somebody who is looking for um, that application-like experience or that kind of user experience is going to opt for Drupal unless they already have pre-existing Drupal ex expertise on that team. And that is solely because people perceive of Drupal, people perceive Drupal as something that is almost too big for its own good um, and almost too packed with features for its own good. That's why people are going for you know, Symfony API implementations or some of these things that you see now in the wild. Um, so I do think that I will give you, a, a, you know, my uh, uh, full... I, I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. I mean, oh, no, 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 no. no. Cool. But, but that is my belief. I think that if we don't do this, and I'm going to be forthright here because I think that, um, you know, we all should hear it, I think that we're in a lot of hot water if we don't uh, uh, do this. I do. Hot water, that was strong, very strong. <laughs> I'm trying not to... Uh, <laughs> so I just want to ask a question from the audience. How many of you have exper experienced with decoupling Drupal? Quite a few. Yeah. And how many of you had fi find out decoupling Drupal difficult or hard? Yeah. Almost everyone. And that's exactly the problem that we are trying to solve. We want to make decoupling Drupal easy. We don't want people to think that decoupling Drupal is difficult. And once we make Drupal decoupled out of the box, it means that it will be easier because we have figured out the solutions for the hard problems already by the, by the core team itself. Uh, so I'm also advocating that we should be trying to solve these problems. I don't know how it's going to look like in, in core in future. That's something we will see. But so we only have three minutes left. Um, maybe cool. just one, one more point. I'm very sorry to those of you who are still in line. Uh, we can talk afterwards. Oh, no, this is going to be the loaded point. Um, so I'm Michael Babker. I'm Joomla's release lead right now. Um, a lot of what I see with the decoupling efforts, my perception not actively being engaged in Drupal, but kind of like following along what's happening in open source in general, I don't get the feeling that decoupling is necessarily making the data model and the presentation layer standalone. I kind of get the feeling what you hinted at a bit ago, where almost make us a Drupal doesn't have a UI layer by default, you plug in whatever the case may be, kind of that hard split framework application type thing. Uh, why do you feel like you need to go that far as far as decoupling goes, whereas just ensuring that your data layer and your presentation layer st stay separate so that you can do these decoupled type operations without necessarily giving the impression that you are framework first, not a UI-based application, almost competing in the symphony space, for lack of better terms. Let's look at what Drupal's really good at, right? It's data modeling and relationships and managing those pieces, right? The front end has traditionally lagged along and limped uh, for lack of a better word, for a long time, mm -hmm. while the rest of the web has made enormous leaps and bounds to get better. And uh, there's always been a very low investment in making Drupal's rendering and front end better. So let's stop doing that and focus our efforts on the things that Drupal's really good at already that also don't seem to get a lot of investment either. So, I mean, we spend a lot of time on these like fancy inbuilt features, but we don't uh, invest in the things that are really important. So, I mean, I just let's just stop and do the front end someplace that can have its own release and its own cycle and can consume Drupal's APIs and build these things. Sounds fair. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's just have one more person, and then uh, Mark, let's talk afterwards. Hi, my name is Chris Caldwell. Um, I am curious, uh, basically, I, I see us going, I think this is an awesome direction. I think we all kind of feel like we need to go here. Um, my concern is more with the, the choice for going with React. Uh, specifically, in light of web components and native browser support of them, we and are. by the time we get there with React, are we going to be kicking ourselves going, wait, now the thing is web components. Why aren't we doing that? You know? I will definitely answer this question. Okay. Uh, web components missed the mark, right? They were, have been announced long before React, and they've been around. But web components and React solve two completely different problems, right? Web components are around to provide a strong-ish encapsulation of your styles and your custom HTML modules. React is all about keeping your data and your data structure in sync with the presentation. Uh, and I think the we're being naive if you think you can use web components without a JS framework. Like people are like, oh, we're going to use web components. And then they just go use Polymer. And it's like, right? Uh, we went, we had like an enormous discussion about this. And we picked React. And I think the sad thing is, is that we picked React because the people that are going to do the work like React. They like React. So. All right, thank you all very much. Um, one last note. Once again, if you are interested in these topics, come to Decouple Drupal Days. And if you are interested in contributing as a volunteer or an organizer, we're about to have a boff to uh, meet about this uh, right now. So thank you. Them. I know, but like, we need to have a robust implementation in place where people can start like with that. Like that's why people love Twig is because they found it easier to get into work with the HTML. Yeah. And like, like I, I like I'm not like trying to diss anything like yeah. working with uh, React and JS frameworks and stuff like that. I enjoyed it, right? But it's not everybody who's doing that. And I just want to make sure that we have, if it, even if it's 